In this video, we are going to take a look at absolute extrema, right? So in our recent videos, we've looked at local extrema, so what is happening just for values nearby. Now we're going to talk about absolute extrema on an interval. Right, so let's define what we mean by this. So uh, let f be defined on an interval i containing c. The value f of c, so the function value at c, is an absolute or global minimum on that interval if the function value is smaller than all of the other function values um, or less than or equal to all of the other function values in that interval. And it's an absolute or global maximum on that interval if our function value at that point C is at least as large as everything else in the interval. Right. Now this might you might feel like this looks really similar to our definition for local extrema. How is it different? I mean, both of them are dealing with intervals. Well, here we are saying we have defined that interval first, and then we're finding what is the absolute largest thing in that interval. For local maximums and minimums, we are saying there is, exists some interval where this is the largest. Not a predetermined interval, just that there is some interval out there where it's the largest thing in the interval. So here we can have maybe some graph. So maybe our graph looks like this. And maybe we want to look at the interval from right here. We'll call that from the value A up to this value b right here. And we want to know what are the absolute maximum, absolute minimum on that interval. Well, the thing that is absolutely the largest in that entire interval is right there. That's our absolute maximum. What is the absolute smallest value? Well, you might be tempted to say, oh, right there, we have a relative minimum right there. That's the smallest value. I'd say, except for this interval continues and there are values smaller. And so on that interval, if we're talking about a closed interval, right there is our absolute minimum. So if we are only looking at values between a and b, then our function value has an absolute largest value right there and an absolute smallest value right there. That's what we mean by absolute extrema. Related to absolute extrema, we have this theorem, the extreme value theorem. And our extreme value theorem says if f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, right, so we're going to have some interval, you have some value a, some value b. What does it mean to be continuous? Well, intuitively, continuous means you can draw a picture without uh, picking up your writing utensil. So maybe here's our function value at the left-hand endpoint, and maybe here's our function value at the right-hand endpoint. So if it's continuous on a closed interval from A to B, then F has both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum on the interval. And so let's say we have some graph. It can do all kinds of stuff here. But it has to. It must. There's no option except for this to happen. It must have an absolute minimum. it must absolutely have an absolute maximum. So both the maximum and minimum in that interval must occur. Now what's happening outside of that interval, uh, we are not interested in. We're only interested in this interval that we've determined ahead of time. That is our extreme value theorem. So let's look at one example of this. Uh, so to find the absolute extrema of a function on a closed interval a to b, 
what we want to do is first we're going to find all the critical numbers. So we want those critical numbers between A and B first. Evaluate the function at the critical numbers that are between A and B. We also need to evaluate the function at A and B. So not only are we evaluating it at all the critical numbers, we're also evaluating it at the endpoints of our interval. The largest value is your absolute max, and the smallest value is the absolute min. So let's look at this example here. f of x is x squared minus 4x plus 2 on this interval from 1 to 5. We need to find critical numbers, so our derivative 2x minus 4. Set that derivative equal to 0. We get x is equal to 2. We're going to evaluate the function at 2. When we plug in 2 into the original function, right, so not into the derivative, into the original function, we get negative 2. We also need to evaluate the function at the endpoints to plug 1 into the original function. And 5. And when we do that, we get these values. And pretty much those have told us everything we need to know. The absolute max is 7. And it occurs at x equals 5. The absolute min is negative 2. And it occurs at x equals 2. So we have found our absolute maximum and minimum. Come back for our next video, and we will look at some more examples. We will see you there.